Hi everyone and welcome to this 3D Total Vodcast. Today we'll be talking with Lania, or as you may know her from Instagram, Fifal. Hi Fifal, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, excited to be here. We're going to be talking a little bit about your book, about your art, about the Kickstarter campaign we're currently running with you. We're also going to be talking about your humongous following on Instagram. Before we get to any of those things, can you tell the viewers just a little bit about yourself and your art? Uh, yes. So to start with, I'm, uh, I'm an artist from Sweden. I'm located in Stockholm. And uh, I like to say that I create art that exists somewhere between the realms of whimsical and spooky, you know, right in that sweet spot. And uh, I'm, I'm the classic, you know, artist tale of someone who has drawn my entire life. I was born with a pen in my hand. And um, really, art has been my main focus, my hyperfixation ever so, for as long as I can remember. And um, yeah, 26 years later, and here I am making a book. So, <laughs> it's going good so far. <laughs> We really love the way you've created your identity on Instagram and you've done that all with the name Fifal. But can you tell us a little bit about the name Fifal and where did it come from? Uh, yeah, it's actually a funny story because people ask me all the time, like, oh, Fifal, what is that? Uh, it kind of sounds like falafel, which I get a lot, you know, <laughs> the street food. And because um, like I decided, like my boyfriend um, convinced me to start a art Instagram and I was kind of hesitant, you know, I was, I was kind of like, you know, feeling very low on my art at that point, but I made one on a whim and I needed a username. So I was, I was just like trying out different combos of words, um, of letters, seeing what was available and Fefal was available. So I was like, oh, that's great. Catchy, you know, kind of easy, like very like short and sweet. And um, now it's my brand. Now it's my identity. So. You know, but really, it was a total whim, complete accident. <laughs> I love how random that is. I almost feel bad when people ask me, like, oh, what was your inspiration? What does the name mean? <laughs> it means absolutely nothing. It has no meaning. <laughs> I haven't Googled it. I think the only thing that comes up when you Google it is either, like, falafel or free fall. Like, it sounds like the mix between those <laughs> words. So, yeah. But, you know, art doesn't have to have meaning to be meaningful. So, yeah. It's so amazing that that random name is now going to feature on the front cover of your book. Uh, and the book's campaign started just last week and it's got off to an amazing start. So I need to really say at this point, a huge congratulations for the success of your book. Yeah, feeling good, feeling good. So we really need to talk a little bit about your book. Can you tell those watching this video a little bit about it and what you might talk about within its pages? A little bit about some of the art that they might see within it? Um, yes. So... The book, just as a basic, it's filled with both my old work and newer artwork, you know. Basically, my whole artistic journey up until this point kind of summarized in a neat, neat form. So, and I've also made a lot of new illustrations for the, for the book because uh, when I got the offer, I was like, oh man, I have to make this book as shock full of art as possible. I just wanted to kind of put my artistic soul in a blender and just pour it all over the contents of this book, you know, kind of just hammer it in there. So that's, <laughs> that's what I did, you know, just wanted to fill it with as much of me as I could. Um, but, but aside from, you know, being a picture book, um, also has some, uh, you know, some, th some passages about my style philosophies, you know, how I got here as an artist, my journey, um, tutorials, what goes on behind the scene, you know, working as a um, artist with a large social media presence. And um, yeah, just kind of everything that I have to offer, really. We absolutely love uh, the cover that you've painted uh, for the for your art book. Can you tell us a little bit about that cover and why you painted that specific image? Oh, I'm so glad you brought it up because really the cover, I worked so hard on that cover because uh, really I felt a lot of pressure when first making it because I knew that it had to be beautiful and it had to, like you really had to make an impression. And I like I, I almost became paralyzed by fear, like how do I make the most perfect cover imaginable? But eventually I just sat down and drew it. And it, it's uh, very inspired by the art, uh, Japanese art of Kintsugi, uh, where you repair something broken with gold. So, which is kind of a spin on that, you know, cause she is sewing herself together with golden thread that will be in golden foil. So I know it will be absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, I think um, usually they say that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, <laughs> but I think the one exception is when it comes to art books, because you, know, you want to know what you're getting. 
when we make our art of books the artists that we work with often have like one section in the book that they really want to draw people's attention to or something they particularly want to get across in the book is there anything within this book that stands out to you as being something you're particularly keen uh, for readers to see or read about uh yeah i think well i'm also excited mainly excited about um, the imagery but those kind of speak for themselves as far as passages go I do uh, talk quite a bit about what it's like kind of within this new field that I'm in as an artist with, um, you know, who ma makes her income through social media. Because it's not really something you learn about in art school. You know, no art teacher ever told me that I could draw cute stuff on the internet for a living, which if I had, it would have made my teenage years so much easier. I was always like, ah, I want to be an artist, but I don't know how. I don't know how. So... I, I think I think if you're if you are interested in following a similar career path, I do try and offer my best guidance. How does it feel to know that so many people are going to read this book? You know, it's already got a, a few thousand backers on the Kickstarter campaign. How does it make you feel knowing that so many people are going to be seeing your images in print and, and reading what you've got to say? Oh, man, it feels absolutely bonkers. It's kind of hard to wrap my head around, you know, even now, because um Creating an art book has been one of my biggest dreams ever since um, I was a child or a teenager. Um, you know, like I, I, I've, I've always known that I wanted to create an art book, but I kind of imagined it would be a bit further in my career path. You know, when I was a bit more established and felt like I had, um, like, and so it was kind of shocked when it came to me so soon. I was like, "Whoa, is this really happening? It's like my lifelong dream. I get to make an art book." So yeah, it, it's still kind of hard to wrap my head around now, even now. What do you think it is that's helped you make that journey so quickly, so much faster than you expected? Do you think it is uh, social media or do you think it's your particular sp style? Is there anything that stands out as being the reason for you that makes you feel you've made that journey so quickly? Yeah, I think I've, I've, I've thought, obviously I've thought about this a lot because, you know, million people, that's that's more people than people who live in Stockholm, you know, the capital of <laughs> Sweden. So I'm like, what are you, what are you guys doing here? Hi. Um, but um, yeah, so I've thought about it a lot and I think ultimately it's because uh, my art feels very grounded and relatable while still being, you know, a bit whimsical and fantastical. It's, you know, it's like people can relate to it because I put on everyday, uh, I take everyday things and scenarios, but put a bit of a fantastical spin on it, you know, kind of opening up a new path to creativity so you know it's, it's right between that border between you know being a bit being a bit weird but also being able to connect with people so i think also just because i freaking love what i do i love creating i love exploring i love being obsessed with topics and exploring that topic and i think that's kind of i, I like to think that's something that shines through in my work and that people you know like being on here on this journey with me We've talked about how your presence on Instagram and your art reflects you so much as a person. Is there any pressure that comes with that, particularly when you take into consideration that you've got a million followers now on Instagram who are viewing your art and seeing your personality come through it? Yeah, I think maybe there was a bit of pressure when I was just starting out because I did kind of grow my social media. Like I think I had like a hundred thousand followers my first year or year and a half which you know starting from nothing was quite a quick you know rise and then I was like oh what 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 are you guys doing here what what am I doing here but you know I've kind of you know been doing this for a few few years now so I've, I've gotten used to it and at this point I'm just very excited that people like it comes very organically to me because the things that I happen to like and be fascinated by just happens to be what other people are also really into. Like it has never, I've never really had to try very hard to, um, to you know, garner, uh, garner attention or, you know, keep up engagement. It just kind of, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun and people are having fun with me and we're all having fun. It's great. <laughs> well, we're having fun making your book too. So there's a lot of people having fun, which is the good news. We, we've talked a little bit about how we're in this modern age now where an artist can make a living from their art. They can uh, set up a Patreon, make their own book. They can make merchandise that they promote through Instagram. Is there any advice that you'd love to give your past self now that you've gone through that process and you've established yourself within it? Yeah, the, this, I think my main 
because it, it really is an interesting combination of both being an artist, but really you're also a bit of an influencer. I hate that term, you know, you don't, if when you're an artist, you don't want to be called an influencer, but I do, at least in my case, my art very much revolves around being able to connect with people, connect with an audience and give people an insight into what goes on in my brain. And I think that is kind of what an influencer does. So it's just, you know, just, kind of you have to see what people react to listen to people listen to your audience and you know offer you know offer a bit of your personality especially when it comes to patreon which is very much dependent on people liking you you know because they want to support you as an artist so of course it helps being good at drawing you know that never hurts <laughs> but also you know you gotta you kind of have to put on a bit of charm as well i think it doesn't hurt <laughs> <laughs> Artists were always being asked about their style. They're always being asked, how did you develop your style? Where did your style come from? And we've talked already about how your art sort of reflects you and your personality. But how did you turn that into your style? How did you find your style? Was it something you had specifically in your mind that you practiced over a period of time to develop? Or has it come more organically than that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I do get that question a lot. I really like that question, actually, because I think... I, I also I remember being younger and I also was obsessed with finding my art style because I had these favorite artists and they were so established and they created amazing things and I, I was just I was just so so eager to be able to make the same but um and for for a long time I didn't really think that I had a distinctive style I think uh, like people tell me now that I have a very distinctive style but I kind of have a hard time even noticing it because really it it's just another facet of my personality. It's, you know, my shape language, the way I explore visually. It really wasn't anything intentional for me. So, like, I do definitely think that you can steer your style towards um, directions by, um, like, taking inspiration from other artists, which is a good thing. Definitely things should do that. But uh, generally, like, if you just relax, don't stress about it too much. Try and draw as much as you can without reference. Letting your brain fill in those you know blank spaces of information with your own hand you'll find shapes that you like you'll find the lines you'll find you, you, you'll find shortcuts that will you know make your art unique so I think if you just relax and try to do that this time will come naturally just just you know have fun with it can you tell us a little bit about how your process works like for example if you were to draw a character do you have a very clear image in your head of what you want that character to look like or is it something more organic that comes to you through sort of a series of explorations? Uh, no, it's, al it's almost, whenever I draw a character, it's almost always because I don't have an idea for like a big <laughs> scale painting. And I, I do really, because it, it's always been kind of not a guilty pleasure, but it's kind of been my fallback, really. Because, you know, when you have creating a bigger piece can take like a whole week and it's kind of exhausting. Sometimes you just want to, you know, draw, work on something for a day and have fun with it. And that's when I typically can design characters. And it's, you know, it's something I really enjoy. I love, I love fashion or like, uh, well, at least I love, I love drawing fashion. I don't really like dressing in fashion, but <laughs> I love drawing fashion. And I love drawing, um, you know, coming up with cute spins on things and, you know, trying to you know, be creative on a smaller scale, sort of. So that's sort of usually how it works. But they're almost always because I don't have anything better to work on. <laughs> And that's how, now it's become like my, um, you know, my trademark. So, you know, <laughs> it's just how it goes. You've talked about how you've uh, been on Instagram for a few years now. Uh, how do you feel you've developed as an artist in that period of time? Oh, definitely. It's been a, it's been a journey. When I first started out, I had just quit art school. I had a very bad experience and I wasn't, I was feeling very down on my art, very lost. We were just, you know, very lost 21 year old who didn't, you know, you really wanted to do art, but it felt impossible. And, uh, you know, I was, and then I, I really hadn't shown much of my artwork to an audience. I was very shy with, um, with people looking at what I do. I very much drew in private. And uh, so the first year when I made on Instagram, I didn't, like the only way that I was able to show people was because I didn't tell anyone who knew me in real life what my username was. And so by being anonymous, I could like, I, that was like the first time that I just like people saw what I do. And I noticed that, hey, people actually like my art. Who what gives, you know? And so that really gave me a confidence boost. And, you know, I started exploring more, exploring more. But really the first, first year I 
you know, I was very lost. I didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of, you know, had fun with it and grew and, uh, you know, talked to, talk to other artists online, saw what they did and, um, you know, kind of delved really deep into the community because like it was the first time that I felt at peace within an artist community. And um, so, and yeah, obviously I've gotten better at it over the years, you know, <laughs> I don't have much time to kind of talk one-on-one -on -one with people, you know, respond to all the comments, which I really miss. And I do think that uh, when you're a new artist, I think it's very important to kind of zone in on the community and get to know everyone. Cause you know, we're all friends here as an artist, you know, that we support each other. So it's good, it's good to keep in mind that um, you're not alone in this. I hadn't uh, realized that you'd stepped away from uh, art school after a year. When you look back retrospectively now, do you feel like that was the right thing to do? And was it hard to do at the time? Oh yeah, definitely. It was never the right uh, place for me, really. I just, I kind of just went because I wanted to pursue art, but I didn't know how. And so I, um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I've always been someone who has preferred to explore my own ideas on my own terms, not really in a classroom setting with, you know, voices in my head. So. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think it was it was a it was a good experience. I think, but um, I haven't really been eager to go back ever since. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if I if I could look, I wish that I could like tell my teenage self, you know, just you know, just do what you love, and you know, good things will come because that would have helped a lot. <laughs> oh, thanks, uh, thanks for being so honest with us with that information. There must be so many artists out there who will benefit from hearing that story of how you sort of stepped away from that formal art education. And, and you mentioned just a minute ago about uh, being able to talk to your teenage self. What other advice would you give if you could rewind time and go back and talk to yourself as a teenage artist? Um, yeah, I think just be, don't be so shy about your work. Don't think that it has to be perfect. Don't sit and fret and worry that people aren't going to like it. You know, just really, I think, and also don't be, don't be, don't be afraid of art being ugly. Cause you know, art is supposed to be ugly sometimes. That's how you get better. So I definitely think, and like, don't, don't try to put this pressure on yourself to be established or be perfect or, you know, make things that other, you know, other people will respond positively to. Cause that's what I did for quite a few years. I just made the things like I was, Technically, I've always been quite skilled in drawing. Like I've never, and I, like it has never been an issue. But I think my style choices, like I, I draw a lot, of, I draw a lot of girly stuff. I've always been very drawn towards you know more feminine things. And with, in order to be taken seriously as an artist, that's not really the thing that they're looking for. So I, for a few years, I like to kind of try to make it a bit more like edgy or you know less 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 frilly, basically. So I wish I could go back and tell myself like you don't have to do that. You know just draw the things you love, draw, have fun, and uh, don't, like, because if you try to conform and water down your artwork, you know, like people are going to be able to tell that you're not doing what you love. We've talked a lot about the past already, uh, but what about the future? You've obviously now ticked uh, an art of book off your list. What does the future hold for FIFA? Oh my God, yeah, it was, yeah, when I, when I was finished with the art book, I was like, oh my God, what do I do now? You know? <laughs> well, I've already done, I guess I'm done. <laughs> but um, no, I'm actually, I'm, I'm talking to a friend um, who is, uh, who's working on indie game and uh, they, like he showed me and this programmer who's working, who they're working together. And they were like, oh my God, you're perfect. Would you like to be the character designer for this project? You have completely free reign. You can do whatever you want with full, full trust in your in your abilities which like when you get hired as a as a designer it's kind of like the dream thing to hear they're like yes you you do you you're doing amazing sweetie just keep doing what you do <laughs> so that's kind of what, what i was working for the next like coming month just you know having fun it's my first time working as a character designer in a professional setting so yes very excited well before we finish i really should say a huge congratulations then this will have been a very big year for you. You'll have your very own art book. You would have gone past a million followers on Instagram. And now you're even saying that you're going to be a character designer on almost your own game. If the game, like obviously it's still in the early stages, but if the game, you know, gets, you know, released, uh, released and everything goes well, it's going to be like a game that's featuring my art only. It's going to be like, like, obviously don't, 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 
programming and you know coming up with stories like it's they're, they're investing way more time in it but visually it's gonna look like my game so yeah kind of <laughs> looking forward to that well wow, fifa thank you so much thank you for speaking to us today thank you for answering all my questions and another huge thank you for making your art off book with us at 3d total yes thank you so much thank you